Thanks, guys, for taking the time out of your day. For some of you, you didn't have any inspections today anyways, right? We're in a totally different market. This is a really weird, uh, you know, market that we're in right now. For some guys, they're seeing great opportunities. Some guys are just going, what the hell? What am I going to do? Hopefully, we're going to dispel some of that for you and help you understand uh, some of the things that uh, you can do for your business, um, changes you can make. We're going to talk about some of the things that I've done. As AJ mentioned, uh, I am one of you. I've been an inspector now for, you know, since 96, and uh, I've seen the ups and downs in the market. I made changes in my business. Um, for those guys, I, I'm assuming everybody can hear me. If for some reason you can't, go ahead and post a you know, a text, but, uh, um, you know, I tell you when, when I watched the market change back in, you know, for the guys that have been in the business for 15 plus years, watch the changes that happened in 2009. I saw this happening in 2004, um, you know, long before I, I watched my numbers meticulously and, uh, I made changes in my business. And so, um, you know, and that was my first introduction to the thermal imaging, which most people will know me by. Um, but there's so many other things that you can do in your home inspection business. And I'm going to hopefully enlighten you to understanding some of those changes and how they're going to impact you, um, how you're going to survive any downturns that happen from here on out. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's things like as a kid, you know, you touch that oven and uh, mom told you not to and then you learned from it and you know that's the whole goal is that we learn from our experiences that we learn from things like today um you know in this webinar and and how we're going to make changes in our business how we're going to invest in our business for that so we're going to talk about a few ancillary services specifically uh that home inspectors can do why would you even consider it we're going to talk a little bit about the money we've got so much information to jam through so we're going to get right started right now um so first of all ancillary what really is that it's it's you know, you're supporting your organization, your company. When you first considered getting into home inspection, you said, I'm going to be a home inspector. You didn't really think you were going to be doing all these other things. And why would you? Because I want you to really think like a businessman and not as a home inspector, but think as a businessman. In fact, if you go to, you know, coaching seminars, uh, with the largest inspection companies, these guys are not inspecting anymore. They're managing a business. And so although you may be a one-man shop or two or three or four-man shop, I want you to think like that business manager, that owner, and your job is to grow your business and build it any way you can. So that's where this term ancillary comes in. So providing necessary support to the primary activities or operation uh, of the organization. And so that's really what you are. So, you know, yes, you're you're in this process of helping someone make the biggest decision of their life. And uh, will they listen to you? We're going to go through that. So in that regard, I want you to think of a carpet cleaner. At some point, most everybody has probably hired some kind of carpet cleaner at some point in your life. You know, maybe you've gone to vinyl floor now and it's not as much an issue. But do you guys actually know the amount of, of services that a carpet cleaner actually offers? Now, you probably have seen some kind of advertisement saying $99 will clean three of your rooms for $99. Do you really think that their business is all about making $99? No. In fact, the average carpet cleaning company has over 30 services, 30 services. That's a three zero. Um, and what you need to understand is where do you stand in that? If somebody comes to you for a home inspection, are you a single service? Again, going back to the word ancillary. So when you think about carpet cleaning, go ahead and look up who your local carpet cleaners are and just click on their services and you're going to see they offer many more things in carpet cleaning. So their goal is not necessarily getting out of there with $99. Their job is getting 500 plus. And so I want you to think like that in your business is that, you know, how are we going to double our fee? Here we are early 2023. So how do you double your fee in 23? Let's use that as our motto. So. I want you to think and understand why 
we need to do this. In fact, I'm going to tell you, you almost have no choice. And so you're going to have to accept the responsibility of managing your business in a way that you're going to have to think and adapt. So I want you to kind of consider what happens with a shark. Now, what happens if a, start, a shark stops swimming? Uh, do they sink? Do they die? Yes, they sink and they die. They need that uh, movement to create the oxygen that they need to live. And so if they're stable, um, they're going to sink and they're going to die. And I want you to understand that, you know, what does that mean? Why are we even talking about this? Because a shark constantly has to be thinking about their next move. What is the next move I'm going to do? Am I going to hit a wall or am I hungry? So they're going to be focusing on, hey, that fish over there, but I'm not going to hit that coral as I'm swimming through the water. You need to be thinking about your next move in your business. So in other words, so that you're not sinking and dying. OK, and when I tell you that means planning ahead and the next word is what does a horse have to do with us? Well, that is adapting. Did you know that horses were like three toed? back in the day? Well, through our world and evolution, and basically as the world changed, they, these have gone down to a hoof, a single toe. And that is the adjustment that takes place for the fact that it is adapting to its environment. So what I'm trying to tell you is ancillary services, thinking about your business and managing it and realizing that you have to plan ahead and you have to adapt to the environment. Otherwise, you might find yourself sinking to the bottom. So adapting is the part where I'm telling you as a business owner, you're going to realize the potential you have as a home inspector and what the impact you can make in the real estate market and how you can help people. And we're going to go through a lot of that stuff today. So now you might say, uh, this is beyond the scope of a home inspection. Hell yeah, it is. All right, so you can make the decision to stick to the basics and do everything you've always done till today, or you can blow away your competition and make changes in your business. But the point of this is, is that if you are going to exceed a standard of practice, I want you to make sure that you're actually getting paid for this. This is important because if you're going to increase your risk, yes, your liability, you want to make sure you're compensated for it. So. So think of it like this. If you contacted uh, for those that have life insurance or vehicle insurance, you've got an insurance agent. And if you called them and says, I want to double my policy, are they going to tell you no? Of course not. They're not going to tell you no. What they're going to do is double your policy because you asked for it. But what's going to happen is your premium is going to go up. So people are already used to this type of mentality that, hey, if I can increase my services, it's going to cost more. So this might be contrary to what some people felt about thermal imaging. Some home inspectors, and some of you may be on this webinar, have found that you've given away a service for nothing because you feel like you need to do it to exist in the market. And that's simply not the case. In fact, let me tell you, yes, I have personally done over 8,000 home inspections. And what I want you to think about with that is I have never, ever, given infrared as part of any of my home inspections. Now, in my case, I'm a little different than 99% of the home inspectors out there. I made a decision to create a complete standalone service of offering thermal imaging. So when a client calls me and they say, hey, Peter, do you do thermal imaging? Of course I do. All right. And uh, I'll, I'll share with them that um, I can do it, but I don't want to charge you for something that I might not you might not need is kind of my attitude, but my minimum on thermal imaging is 425 bucks. So for me to pull a camera out, it's 425 bucks. And I'm not willing to do that for nothing as some guys do, or even 50 or a hundred dollars. However, I am not, you are not me. So I have to teach the masses but what I can tell you is, is that what you don't want to do is be offering a service for absolutely nothing because the perception of value when you pay nothing is nothing. So I want clients to completely understand there's a value to what we do. So when it comes to thermal imaging, yes, I'm going to encourage you to charge for that service.
So how can a home inspector make more money? I want you to think about it like this. You have existing sales. Maybe it's a lot less than you were doing a year ago today. Uh, I know this is a fact with my own business. And so, um, yes, there's always going to be those guys that say, I'm killing it. All right. But that's not the majority of you out there. So what I want you to think about is that you have an existing client base currently right now. And how are we going to make more money? This goes into that ancillary services. Well, there's a couple of key things that I want you to think about. First of all, home inspectors are the most trusted people in the entire real estate transaction. In fact, there's nobody that's more trusted than a home inspector. Realtors and attorneys, they're paid for by the sellers. Appraisers are paid for by the buyer, but they work for the bank. Termites, typically a loan requirement. But home inspectors are looking out for their client's best interest. So this is where, hey, these people trust you. They will listen to you. Well, what happens if you think like a businessman and make decisions for your business and you got people who are willing to listen? They will spend more money with you. In fact, let's go back to that statement, double your fee in 23. I want you to really, if you're serious and you believe or want, you have to want to believe that you can actually double your fee. It is not that difficult. By the time we're done with this one hour, you're going to have an insight on exactly how you're going to do that. So what we're going to do is go through a few of these ancillary services. I'm going to explain to you some best practices and why you got to be seriously thinking about them. Maybe you already do one or two or three of these items. I doubt if you're all doing, everybody on this is doing all of them. But what I can tell you is, is that there are many more. It's not just the ones I'm going to talk about today. I'm just going to happen to talk about the things that can yield the most money. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is probably the lowest amount unless you plan on taking this to a commercial aspect where like in my business, my commercial aspect of thermal imaging is huge. In fact, in 2022, I had a 43% drop in transactions. Okay. So the number of home inspections I did were 43% less. However, I did a 3% increase in revenue. How is that possible? Well, that's why we're here today. So thermal imaging, you know, in 2000, you know, four, I saw the economy changing for which most people say is 2007, eight, nine. That's when we were at the pit. But I saw it happening in 04. I watched my numbers religiously. I could see that my, for the first time, my business was not doing 15 or 20% increases. In fact, I went flat in 2004. So 2005, I invested 20 grand and bought my first thermal imaging camera. Some of you guys might say that's expensive. Um, I look at it as an investment. And for those who haven't really considered, there's a difference between the words expensive and investment. And uh, go ahead and put it in the chat log for those smart ones that are on this. Um, go ahead and list what is the difference between expense and investment. Um, it's a big difference. So um, anyways, everybody can follow along with that and have a little fun. But what I would tell you is, is that today it's not 20 grand. In fact, the camera that I spent 20 grand on today, I have a camera in the $500 range uh, that our company sells that is superior in every way to the equi to to the equipment that I purchased uh, 18 years ago, and so um, that opportunity um, is huge. So what I can tell you today is that for the cost of a single inspection, um, you can have this service available and. You know, a lot of times the guys are saying, and I told you, I don't want you to, I, for, I forbid you to give the service away. <laughs> I want you to add it. And it, at a minimum, it's like $50. But I tell most guys, this is an easy $100 add-on and customers will pay for it. All right. So, you know, where was infrared? It was really unheard of in 1995. In 2005, this was a magazine, The Communicator, and it, it tells you it was the wave of the future. And uh, it's funny, the top left, the yellow camera, that was the one that I first purchased. Um, and so, um, you know, it, 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 it was something that, uh, you know, I, I wanted to do. I, I wrote my business plan in 1999 on thermal. 
So um, I invested it right when I saw the market change, and and uh, yeah, as uh, as Matt uh, Matt Erdine says, uh, the ROI in the chat log is the reason why because it's a return on investment. Yes, I have made in the millions of dollars with thermal imaging, and uh, it's made a big impact uh, in my company. So yeah, fifty percent of my actual service work in two thousand twenty two was infrared, and that's mostly on commercial basis. So, you know, now, you know, as we get closer and we're in here in 23, um, this stuff is, is pretty standard. In fact, I mean, I still sell a lot of equipment when I come to shows um, and it's because there's guys who just haven't pulled the trigger. I basically say if you, ha if you have no intentions of getting infrared into your business, you're already on your retirement plan. And that may be fine. It may be fine. You know, um, you just have to decide. Like I said, you got to think like a shark and constantly be anticipating your next move. And if you haven't made this move, I can tell you there's it's so it's so easy now. It, it's it's a lot more difficult when you spend 20 grand. You have to go home to your spouse and say, hey, I just spent 20 grand because, yeah, I did that. Um, it was a pretty good uh, challenging uh, night for me <laughs> when I did that. So some of the questions a lot of guys approach me is, is that what camera do I need to buy? What's the best one? Oh, my God. There's like 15 different brands of cameras out in the market. And, uh, you know, um, you know, the, the thing is, is that which one will do the job? Well, I'm going to tell you a fact. Um you know, I, I probably sell about eight of the brands of cameras, so we're involved in many of the, the uh, equipment. Here's a fact. No customer's ever going to call you up and say, uh, what kind of infrared camera you got? It's not going to happen, all right? They're not going to ask you how much resolution you got. In fact, let's break to it like sewer cameras, chimney cameras. They're not going to ask you what type you have. They want to know, do you do this? And are you going to be able to take care of their service for them? That's what they want to know. And so reality is, yes, you can buy a low cost infrared camera and get the job done. What I tell you is buy the one that does the job. Here's the simplest thing to remember and write it down. Most resolution for the best price. That's going to be the easiest thing to say. So a decent camera can be held for under a thousand dollars, and um, adding this can equate to fifty to two hundred dollars an inspection. So, you know, I want you to start thinking. You know, write down on a piece of paper. You know, whether you're viewing this, you know, six months or a year from now, or you're on us with us live, you know, on this webinar, is I want you to write down on a piece of paper what is your average inspection fee. All right. If you don't know that. I think we figured out the first problem in your business is that you are an employee of your business. It doesn't matter that, you know, you don't, you don't really know your numbers. That's the thing is you need to know your numbers because if we go back to double our fee in 23, by the time the end of this presentation, we're going to more than double it. But I want you to think about these numbers based on the information that I teach you today. And I want you to start with that number. What is your average fee right now? And then I want you to start adding up numbers that I tell you. For example, it's going to equate to anywhere from $50 to $200. And I want you to think of the value after I talk about some best practices. And I want you to start writing down that number. Okay, you can get $75. So maybe your $450 average inspection, and now you got another $75. I want you to do that through all these applications we're going to talk about today. Um, one thing to know, once it, yes, you can get cameras in the $100, $200 range. Don't waste your time. Honestly, they're consumer-based products. They're really bad resolution, probably like an 80 by 60 detector, and um, you'll be unhappy with it. And to, When you start buying some of these brands that aren't supported by, you know, like I don't carry any of the garbage, you know, I carry, you know, some cameras that are better than others. And it really depends on what you want to do with it. You know, um, the guys who want to go commercial, they're going to spend 15 grand with me just on a camera. That's the camera that I use. I mean, I, mine's like $17,000. How many of you guys said that's expensive? <laughs> so we got some more responses that, uh, you know, the obviously the the technology and what guys are, are realizing is the return on investment. It's a cost of operations that it can that can generate revenue, um, you know, so so, yes, the awareness um, crazy enough um, about an hour ago, I get a call from a lady 
I get the weird calls too, by the way. She calls me up and left me a message and I called her back and she said her neighbor's spying on her and he has laser beams going through her yard. And she wants me to come inspect. And I, 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 yes, I get those weird jobs. I have had been on ghost hunts. I have been asked to go up to a mountaintop while a, a Indian chief conjures up spirits. I get that weird stuff. And I tell you, charge through the roof and have a lot of good weapons with you just in case that stuff comes through. But uh, right now today for home inspections, look at anything that's in that probably four five hundred dollars to a thousand as a minimum and for those who want to see the opportunity a little bit beyond that there's some good cameras in that thousand to five thousand dollar range and when you know you're going all at it you're going to be spending a bit more and we can walk you through that all right so what i want you to see here is just basically some different cameras and this is that low resolution on the left to the higher resolution on the right. And they're all of the same picture. So as you notice, all of them see the same thing. They see the heat that's generated in those pictures and um, you know where the faults are occurring. Um, that's the goal with an infrared camera is to show me what my own eyes can't see and how can I you know, um, uh, find the problem before it actually equates to a fire. Um, and that's really the basis behind doing uh, infrared surveys. So, but again, all the cameras, doesn't matter which one you buy, they see thermal. It's just, they're gonna be a prettier picture. Now, pretty much the, the under like thousand dollar range would probably be between the second and third image. That's kind of the resolution you're getting. When you start to get to the three to $5,000 range, it would be in the fourth image between the third and the fourth. And when you start to get to the seven, five to 10,000, it's in the fourth and fifth image right here. And then now when you're spending in the 10,000 plus, um, that's the far right image. And I tell you, you know, I don't show up on jobs. I mean, I have clients that I I actually generate. Um, I've made five grand in four or five hours, let's just say, but I don't show up with a thousand dollar camera kind of thing. So I guess the moral is, is that what do you want to do with your business? Um, you know, where do you want to take it? So that's called your business plan. I'm hoping all of you haven't. If you if you do not have a business plan, um, I, I can't encourage you enough to do this. This is really important that you write down your steps. You need to have short term goals and, and long term goals. And the short term is really like what I want to do in 23 or 24 and long term would be what I want to do three to five years out from now. Um, five inspectors, 10 inspectors. I want to diversify my plan. Why would you diversify and add services? Because go to any financial planner. They don't tell you to put all your eggs in one basket. So you got to be prepared for things like any economy change. So let's go through some best practices and help you understand some ways with thermal imaging and how it can be beneficial for you. So the number one primary benefit of thermal imaging is leak detection. By far more than anything else, um, there are times that uh, when materials become wet, they don't, it's a very slow drip and it just doesn't saturate the product enough and that, and maybe a stain doesn't show up. And so this is why thermal imaging is a, a benefit for buyers of homes to pay you to do that because you are going to see more than the average guy. Electrical faults would be the second most, um, that's what the lady called me. She wanted me to inspect all her outlets in the house, but I was explaining to her that unless she had a load on it, it wouldn't do much. Um, number three is energy audits. Um, for those who do new construction, big opportunity. Um, I used to do specialize. A lot of my inspections were brand new construction. In fact, I was doing at least one a week, many times two a week, and about 90% of my clients would pay me another at the time $350 more to inspect their insulation because the builder's on the hook. So great opportunity for you. And then HVAC systems, um, great opportunity for that. So, and then, you know, of course, there are a lot of opportunities. Everything in the world has a temperature. So we want to kind of look through that. So 
kind of some things to understand is, is that thermal imaging does not see water. It doesn't see through walls either, by the way, for those who, who want to know that. It sees the effects of water, and that is evaporation. So, um, you know, that's how we can locate moisture is that basically that area sometimes is only a degree cooler, but it shows up thermally. And really important in this is training is important. So yesterday, yes, I had a home inspection in the morning, but I had two moisture intrusion jobs in the afternoon. So my infrared work far exceeded my revenue on home inspection. And believe it or not, the two jobs that I did were each an hour and my home inspection was a little over two hours. So you can imagine, and I made probably about 75% more money uh, between the two jobs, actually uh, 100% more money because I charged literally, it was almost the same amount. And relatively, infrared will yield me as a standalone service about twice what a home inspection pays. So this is where resolution is everything. So a lot of guys have heard of like the FLIR C3 camera. The, ca the image on the right is a C3. And what I did was I turned off the uh, visual, what's called MSX. And so I wanted you to see actually the resolution of that image and what it looks like. It looks like a blob. It looks terrible. This is why I'm telling you that, that don't get caught up in, in, in marketing hype, which is like the MSX. What we want is native resolution. And you can see there's a quite a bit of change. Even with the 320, it's not like an amazing image, but it's certainly a hell of a lot more definition than the one on the right. So, um, you know, and, and environment is everything. So the better the conditions, you'll see better pictures sometimes even with the lower resolution cameras. Um, you know, here's a picture, and although it might be hard for you to see, um, you know, these pictures were taken, the one on the left was taken two days before, and the first picture on the 19th, we had no sign of any moisture, but the picture on the right, it, we could see evidence of moisture. Well, uh, you can see the moisture meter picture that visually I could see the moisture, but thermally I could not. And this is where training is really important is understanding that why is it that I can't see it is because, you know, there's there's a there's a diurnal cycle basically where the temperature will change uh, two times during the day where a wet area will equal the dry area temperature wise. And of course, that's what the camera is doing. So your brain is the most important tool. And that's why it's important that you understand that uh, when you're looking um, electrical systems, you know, the big thing is, is that uh, visually there was no sign of this fault um, that you could see visually, but when you put a thermal camera on it, you can see it. And then we're able to tell like with an amperage clamp and confirm up that this is an overloaded circuit. So there's times when 90% of the time it's a loose connection on electrical. And, uh, you know, we use an infrared camera to kind of show us those areas. So, um, you know, there's situations where some people would say, hey, this isn't really that hot. You know, maybe it's only a few degrees warmer. But what I want you to understand is, is that when we do get things, the load is very critical because as you can see, I can show you the load reading is 0.3 amps and it's a 20 amp circuit. Why is that important? Because if I've got a 14 degree rise on a, a third of an amp, imagine what happens if you load that circuit up. This is a fire hazard. So, um, you know, energy audits, they're definitely an opportunity. I, I asked this client if he got a discount on his retrofit. They uh, filled the insulation in the walls. And in this case, cellulose, it has a slump and it'll settle down. And these guys didn't check their work. But yet there is a technology out there that allows them to do that. So, you know, keep in mind that those are those are some things that uh, are very beneficial. And this isn't on an older home that was retrofitted, but think of like new construction. New construction, it shows you the envelope right where the missing insulation is um, and, uh, you know, how you're going to make some money. So HVAC, for those that don't use their thermal camera um, for it, it is very effective. Um, you can go out and for those who've never done this is, you know, you, if you, if you look inside the house, a lot of guys like to see a 14 or 15 degree split. And what I want you to think about is, is that, um, what happens if we've only got, uh, a 10 degree split, but outside between the liquid and the gas lines, we got a 20 degree split. What do you think the problem is? Maybe go in the chat log and put that down so everybody can see what your thoughts are. Why in a house, you're only getting 10 degrees of cooling, you know there's something wrong, but you go outside and by the way, in an ideal situation, the liquid and the gas lines will have a very similar temperature split. 
Okay, so if we get 18 degrees inside, you're probably going to get 18 degrees between the liquid and gas line outside. And so there's going to be situations where you get it more. Um, sometimes that's due to a low charge, you know. So if you get freezing that occurs on the lines outside, that's because you have a low charge on the system. So, but but just to give you that idea, but I want you to think about what you think might be causing uh, why we would get not good cooling inside, but good cooling outside on the on the liquid and gas. Um, and uh, we'll go from there, see if you guys know that answer. Okay, a lot of questions. Guys asked me things like, do I need um, a level one certification? And so here's the simple answer. So I've trained, I don't know, close to probably 3,500 to 4,000 home inspectors. I've certified in our infrared training uh, certification program that we have. And um, and what I can tell you, I know a lot of guys have gone through other uh, one and two day seminars for home inspectors and, you know, InterNACHI has a, a program that, that they have and the e-learning and stuff. At the end of the day, you want any and all training. But the reality is, is that uh, when you're adding the device as an ancillary, your primary business is home inspection. The answer is you do not need to have a level one. Does it hurt? No, it does not hurt. It's very marketable. But if you plan to invest in the business and do it as the primary service is thermal imaging, 100%, you need to get a level one minimum. Um, you know, I'm a level three. I take it uh, to the next level because I, I'm bidding jobs right now. I have a contract that's, I, the contract's been signed. The purchase order hasn't been issued, but it'll equate to over, probably over $50,000 a year that I'm going to get every year now. And um, and those kinds of revenue sources you just don't see in home inspection. We get an agent and we get a buyer that'll come back in five years when they buy the next house. So the answer is you do not need level one, but if you plan on making it a standalone business, then yes, you highly wanna do that. Um, you're gonna see revenues of like 1,500 to 2,500 a day. And those are standard for me. Um, while I'm going out, it's not uncommon for me charging, you know, two grand for an inspection day. And sometimes I only work four or five hours for that. So good opportunity. All right, so that's kind of the gist on, on home inspection. And, and what is another tool in the bag? You know, uh, depending on where you live in the country, this may or may not be uh, an avenue for you. But, um, but I'll tell you, even in areas that um, are not uh, as, you know, prevalent with pools and spas, you know, 25%, I'm in California, in Southern California, 25% of all my inspections have uh, pools and spas. And about 95% of all my clients will pay me to do that pool inspection. And so um, what I can tell you is, is that um, it's a great opportunity. Today I had one, the guy did not book the pool inspection. When I showed up, he booked and paid for the pool inspection today. And he told me he has a pool cleaner. And I kind of explained to him, pool cleaners are chemical jockeys. These guys don't really know enough about it. I mean, I had a I had plaster that was as thin as can be, mineral deposits, expansion joints, pool lights not working. The guy was telling me the pool's perfect condition. The guy's been maintaining it for 15 years. And I'm telling him how it's not perfect. It's got a lot of problems and it's going to be very costly, um, you know, if this 1960 pool light is activated. So, so those are some things to think about. Um, so it's estimated about 5 million pools in America. 40% of those pools are in California or Florida. You know, like I said, close to a quarter of all my inspections have it. Now, believe it or not, we developed training, uh, pullandspawninspectors.com. You can see more about that. And I'll explain a little bit about what we do with this process. So most guys do the standard pool inspection, which is the safety, the equipment, operating this. And what I wanted to do is take it to the next level. Because as I said, if I'm going to increase my fees, if I'm going to do this stuff, I got to I got to do more. I got to do more for that. The good news about is the more does not equate to the same amount of work that a home inspection does. In fact, for example, like a pool inspection, that takes me about 30 minutes um, to do the inspection. And so what, you know, for the $150 that I charge, which now I'm going to $300 because I'm going to add a couple of services that I'm going to talk about. That only adds about 10, 15 minutes, actually maybe 20 minutes to my inspection for adding a couple of devices, but it's going to more than double my inspection fee. So these are kind of that how to go from 150 to 300. Now I doubled that. So um, 
And believe it or not, the actual first customer that uh, client that we had student was out of the state of New York. And you'd think you only have a five month pool season, which is fine. But because uh, they you might have pools that get winterized. But even if you only have five percent of your inspections with pools, what do you do when you get one? You say you don't do it. Who does it? Believe me, there's a lot of opportunity for doing inspections on pools when you learn how to do it and you're the only game in town that can do this. So a couple of things to think about, um, you know, in, in, in the business, obviously this was, you know, over 10 grand of additional revenue in, a, in an easy year um, and it's an easy 30% increase in revenue. Um, there's standards of practice that are set up, you know, for doing pools and spas. And as in any standard of practice, they reference that you don't have to exceed and you don't have to do certain things, for example, like chemical analysis of the water and leak detection. Um, I can't tell you enough how many people call me and ask me if their pool's leaking. Well, how if I know the pool's in the ground, the pipes are not exposed. Unless there's a leak on a pipe, I have no idea. So I kind of am the guy that thinks outside of the box is how, how are we going to make additional revenue? And how you do that is by increasing your liability. Remember we talked about if you're going to increase your liability, make sure you increase your pay. Well, that's what we're going to talk about here. So this is an easy additional $100 by doing these two little things, and that is chemical analysis and water loss analysis. And so these are done with these two devices called the Leakalyzer and the Spin Touch. The leakalyzer is about an 18 minute test. You turn off all the equipment in the water, you set it up, you can see it on the left and it's got a computer and it takes in consideration evaporation rate. And, um, you know, the as far as evaporation, um, it knows how much water loss is actually occurring in the pool and not due to evaporation. So um, very simple uh, test. They tell you 10 minutes. Reality is it's probably more like 15 to 20 minutes. Um, you can run the test as long as you want the accuracy. It'll tell you a scale and it'll tell you if that pool's losing water. This is very important because one thing you guys need to understand is why do people have home inspections? They have home inspections is because they want to renegotiate the transaction. Every buyer feels like he overpaid for a house. OK, and, and uh, they're using your inspection report to renegotiate this transaction. So why is it important that you offer these additional services? Because if they don't do it, they don't have the maximum negotiation. I'll answer the question for those who say my realtor won't go for it. Believe me, you're you're skeptical. I'm going to tell you straight out that I had those same agents who would tell me I don't want you to do that. And, you know, those are not the agents I want to work for. But in the reality is, is that when you educate the agents on what you're actually doing, they see the benefit and they will come back and order the service. So the marketing for any additional service that you offer occurs in the first year. After that, the agents do the work. And so, um, so in, in this case, the leakalyzer and the uh, spin touch, 60 seconds, you take a syringe of water, you inject it into this uh, disc, they cost about four bucks a piece in 60 seconds, we know the chemistry of the pool. Why is this important? Because the chemistry of the pool? My God, homeowners, the seller of the house just drops a chlorine bomb in the pool, makes it look nice and crystal clear. But did you know when your pH level is off, you're killing the plaster, you're killing the equipment, you're accelerating the, the, the life expectancy, <laughs> you're, de you're, you're dropping it down. It's not going to last as long because the equipment is going to be eaten up by this chemistry problem. So we now have a device that can tell us all of this. And then there's another component to this where, you know, we can help homeowners with a robot that will um, that'll sit in the pool over time. So our training that we have is completely free. I mean, guys who buy the equipment from us, we give you the training. We teach you how to do this and how to build your business with it. So those are the decisions you have to make. Pools, this is the future. And my world is that the more information I can give them, the better. My clients trust me. I'm the most trusted person in the entire transaction. Agents might hate me in the beginning, but they realize that the buyers love us when we can help them. All right, so this is one of the newest things that we're going to be doing, and this stuff's been readily available to people to buy this stuff now, is gas analyzing. Why is it important, you know? Um, well, I can tell you that um, 
this is another hundred bucks. You know, uh, HVAC guys are charging an easy several hundred dollars to do an analysis of the furnace. You know, these devices are like a thousand bucks. You know, you can get a flue gas analyzer for like anywhere from like 500 to, you know, $5,000, depending on, you know, I always tell guys when they, they look and they go, which one should I buy? They say, what kind of phone do you have? You know, if you're pulling out and you have the iPhone uh, SE like me, you know, old school one, you know, it's, it's, it's a new phone. It's a version three, but it's just not the best out there. Then, you know, you you don't, you don't have to be that best guy. You don't have the 80 inch TV, you know, you maybe have the 60 inch TV. Um, but, uh, you know, when you have the 14 and the 80 inch TV, you know, which guy you are, you're going to go buy the $4,000 analyzer because that's just who you are. But um, but this this thing is really important and it's so easy. Literally, you're taking a little uh, probe, sticking it up into the boiler or water heater exhaust or the furnace. You're sticking it into the exhaust and you're measuring the, the flue gas. And basically that exhaust is going to tell you is that furnace burning right. Um, you know, is it an 80 percent furnace, 90 percent? What type of gas? All those things get programmed into the device. And then it's going to tell you basically the exhaust amount of carbon monoxide. So for those, what is carbon monoxide? It's a byproduct of incomplete combustion. So if we have carbon monoxide going up a flu, then we got a problem. There's a certain level that's acceptable. And the number is usually under 100 parts per million. And anything over that can be deadly. Once you hit 400 parts per million, a couple of hours, you're dead. So these are the things to know. It's a five to 10 minute per appliance, but you can literally add that $100, maybe more per appliance by doing these tests and giving those people this information. This little device will do the job for you. Um, for us, um, InterNACHI's probably got some stuff on this. We have, again, um, you know, the equipment. It's something that somebody can purchase and, and we'll be developing out the training. We're hoping to have that by summer of 23, um, that the training should be ready. But there's certainly a lot of opportunities out there to get at education. I mean, thousands of uh, webinars have been taught on things like this. So you can see uh, on how to uh, build that out. But some guys might make a gold package in their home inspection where they just kind of package a lot of things and say, hey, this is uh, that doubled fee. My 450, it's $900 or $1,000, but I'm including all these other things for it. So definitely this is an easy opportunity um, to take your fee up. So now we've talked about thermal imaging. We've talked about pool and spa. We've talked about fluid and gas. I want you to think about that piece of paper that you wrote your inspection fee down and how much more could you get? OK, maybe you don't have a lot of confidence and you're going to give some one of these away. OK, or you're going to get twenty five dollars. OK, write the number down, whatever you feel. I tell you that the hundred dollars is half of what the technicians are charging. So they're charging a bigger number because they can. And I'm telling you, you can, too. <laughs> So um, this is kind of a chart just showing you, you know, parts per million, um, you know, like 200 parts per million of CO after about two to three hours, you're going to have physical symptoms. It's life threatening, like at 400, you know, at two to three hours, um, you're going to have at 400 parts per million, you're going to have symptoms in 45 minutes. And that's basically if our exhaust gets clogged. Um, not burning right. I mean, I don't know how long you've been in business, but uh, we've had situations, you know, where I go test a water heater and you can see it's backdrafting. That just means the exhaust is going right into the area where uh, the appliance is. And so um, that's why, you know, like in California, at least in many states, they require carbon monoxide detectors because people die. We're trying to stop that. And so it's it, the cool thing about this and why it's so important now is that everybody's aware of carbon monoxide poisoning. The, the news media has really brought attention to that. So, so they put the fear, people buy out of fear. And, and now that they're aware of it, that you can offer this service to tell them exactly if their gas burning appliances are doing their job. So think about it. It's an opportunity to make more money. So sewer inspections, you guys have seen this in the years, the last few years, really starting to pick up big opportunity for, for uh, revenue, quick revenue. In fact, it's like 15 to 30 minutes of work. And just this alone is like a 20 to 40% increase in revenue. 
Um, I, I, because I told you, I kept infrared separated in my home inspection business to a business of its own. Um, I wanted to do something that I could add and add on a lot of my inspections. And so this is 2014 uh, when I first started doing sewer inspections. In fact, we launched our training with sewer scan back in 2015. There was no training on the market. We were the first ones out there out of the gate with this offering for home inspectors. In fact, when I looked in 14, the only reason I developed the training was because it didn't exist. I, I looked everywhere in the industry. There was no training on how to do a sewer inspection and how to add it to my business. So uh, what do you know? I got to develop it. And that's what we did. And in fact, and now you probably got four or five different companies um, that are teaching and training sewer inspections out there and kudos, you know, I, I'm all for it because I think this is by far one of the biggest improvements I could have ever done for my home inspection business. Um, you know, so so the potential of, of adding that revenue is there. Um, so pretty much any house over 20 years old, you see a new clean out or any trees, these are all opportunities. And honestly, I used to never think townhouses were an opportunity. Oh my God, I'm getting them to do it. You know, a starter home in California is a million dollars. So do you think people question giving me another 175 bucks to do the sewer lateral? It's a colonoscopy. Um, they'll pay it every time. So, you know, so the, to kind of do some research in your area, what, what guys are getting, there are parts of the country that, yeah, you're going to see guys doing this for 150 bucks. Um, there's guys here, most of them around the 350 range um, for sewer inspection. Some are getting a little bit more especially if they have to pull a toilet. Um, and speaking of, do I pull toilets? No. Um, you know, last year, 45% of all my inspections added the sewer inspection. And that was, yeah, that was a good percentage. I mean, I had, I had uh, $17,000 of additional revenue and that's just part-time. Keep in mind, I have other businesses that sustain me, but 45% of all my inspections did that. So what can that change for you? If, if your average inspection fee, and let's say you just get 20% of your inspections, do it. And yeah, I charge 350 and then I do it for half price if they do it at the time of home inspection. So if you get 175 bucks, how much revenue change would that be for you? Believe me, you're going to pay for the appliance and you know this this device in six months. And again, remember, nobody calls you and asks you what kind of sewer camera you have. Um, there's different brands. I chose one for me based on features, and I wanted certain things. I wanted the best, and so um, it's not the most expensive, but it does certainly do the job. So, of course, your opportunity, make sure you have a house that you can get into the sewer inspection. I use that 350 half price if I do it at the time of home inspection. Remember, we talked about it. People buy out of fear. You know, by the way, people can live in a house with a broken window. They can live in a house with a reverse polarity. Uh, if you can't poop, man, you ain't living there. I, I got to have that thrown, right? So, uh, you, you, you know, people are fearing that like you offer this service and if they don't do it, what could happen? Well, you can't poop. All right. So this is what we're looking at is the lateral, which is the line between the house and the city connection. And just so you know, in most areas, um, there's some provinces of Canada where there, there's a delineation line, maybe at the property line or 75 feet out from the house where the uh, municipality is responsible. And that's fine. Most places in the United States, the homeowner is responsible all the way to the city connection, which many times is in the middle of the street. So just some things to think about. Um, and all those problems happen in there. I mean, none of our sewer laterals were designed to last as long as they are. You know, um, you know, the, 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 these things are 50, 100 years old and they're, they're, it's inevitable. It's going to have problems. And that's why you do this colonoscopy of the sewer lateral. So um, I get guys who say there's no clean out. Well, clean outs have pretty much always been required. Um, sometimes we might have to go through a roof, but uh, for the most part, I'm after the ones I can do. And, and you're going to get situations where you don't have a clean out, you don't have access. It's okay. I'm going to leave some work for the plumber. I just want the lion's share and the lion's share um, are pretty much accessible. So, you know, these are the types of things you're going to see with tree roots. They'll damage the line. You can't blame the tree. It's just trying to feed the family. 
So, um, you know, you're going to need a camera, what kind of camera to get, you know, of course, there's many types on the market, you know, what can fit in your car. Most of the lines are open reel types of uh, sewer cameras out there. And you got to think about it. Like I drive, that was my old vehicle. I now drive a Ram Pro City. So kind of like the Trans Ford Transits, you know, the open cargo van, the smaller cargo vans, they work great. But, you know, my sewer camera is two feet away from me and I know where that line's been. So, you know, I don't, I don't have the space for those big systems and I don't want the open reel with me. Um, I use the unit that's on the left. It has a pan and tilt camera, which really is the only one. Um, there is a Chinese brand that has a pan and tilt. This one's out of Germany uh, that I chose. Um, I like it because it does the, the pan and tilt and that full cable is retracted inside of a briefcase. So that's a 20 pound briefcase. So I don't have big bulky equipment. You know, plumbers usually are driving vans and trucks and they have a lot more room than home inspectors. And, you know, if you ask any plumber, they're going to tell you rigid. Rigid's the number one system in the world. I mean, they sell a lot. And the reason why is because plumbers break their systems. And that's why they call the company rigid, <laughs> you know? So they got a thicker cable and it's big and bulky, but you know, you pick what works for you. Honestly, it's like every one of us on this webinar drives a different car. <laughs> you know, you drive a car because you like that brand. You know, I like the brand Pro City. I'm going to go to a truck next, you know. So, um, you know, that's you pick and choose what works for you. But do you do have considerations of how much space you have. Um, you get guys that will tell you you need 150 foot cameras, 200 foot cameras. All of those require bigger reels. And, you know, although those opportunities are there, the code says that every 100 feet, you have to have a clean out. And from our business, that's a reportable condition. Um, so, you know, when, when, we, when we go 100 feet, I'll see the other clean out. And if it's buried, I report it. It has to be accessible. It's not. So just like a broken window gets reported in a report, a lack of an additional clean out does as well. Um, you know, but sometimes I do get properties where I have two or three runs I have to do and I charge appropriately for it, just so you know. So this is the top right is the most sewer cameras you'll see will have a spring and they'll have a camera head um, that looks forward and I can show you point in case why a pan and tilt for my business has made a difference because I can rotate that camera to two inches away and see right up and close and personal what's going on. I've had offsets and sewer lines where literally I'm watching the water pour out. So, you know, there is a price to be paid. You can go to Harbor Freight and buy a sewer camera. No client's going to ever ask you what kind of camera you got. If you're proud of that $500 camera, you go for it. And, uh, you know, if it works, you could buy it for 7000 Heck, you could buy 14 of those things. You know, so, you know, I mean, it's all in how you judge your business and what you want. I chose what works for me, but I can tell you there's enough money at this as 175 bucks. It'll pay for the job. Um, you need to have a recording. We do photos in our inspection reports and we provide videos separately to our clients. So, you know, obviously you're going to need to have that locators. I recommend having it. It's a marketing thing, but basically so that guys can see that. So you can go find where the problem is. The, by the way, if somebody asks you where this is and you're doing a locate, you're working for the seller. You know, the buyer just wants to know that this system's clean. It's got no problems. And, and if I told you statistically on homes over 30 years of age, 70 to 80 percent of all of them have problems. That's why this is a big opportunity for you. You know, the systems are battery or plug in. Most of them are batteries today. You just want something that's portable that can work. The kinds of problems. This is one of my first inspections. You can see the date back in 2014. This is a 90% plug. This was a $2,500 repair. So that was the repair afterwards. So they do an epoxy liner. This was $2,500. So that was the best 175 bucks that somebody spent, you know, to be able to, to find out that that grandma was on stool softeners because that's the only thing that would have gone down that damn toilet um, and gone through that line. Uh, you know, if you bring some kid with fiber, man, that thing would have backed up into the house, no problem. So root growths, backups, pondings, holding water. Sorry if the pictures aren't so clear through the webinar, but but keep in mind, these are all the things that we're gonna see. And, and you know, the only thing that's getting through these root balls is basically pressure and a system forcing itself. You can see debris in the lines, offsets. 
uh, scale buildup, backup of sewage into the line. Um, and, and this is excessive scale, but, you know, septic tanks also have a lateral. And just so you know, when guys say, oh, I already had it inspected, septic guys don't inspect the lateral. So, you know, this is where I got debris, offsets, waters pouring out the, that little drain separation there. I've had broken lines. They put in a clean out. Yeah, good job, guy. They just pour some concrete and they broke the whole clay line all the way through. This is high definition. So look real close. The guys with the 80 inch TV monitors, they want to get that high definition, man. You can see that microscopic fly in the top right corner. So this is this is the difference with HD versus standard definition. Again, no client's going to ask you for it. It's a personal thing. So septic, this is an offset right before the uh, system goes into the tank. And, um, you know, there's there's a lot of opportunity. So 20 plus year old home, they got trees, they all got the sewer lateral, um, takes 15 to 20 minutes, and boom, there's a nice 20 to 40% increase in revenue. So uh, add photos to the report. I use uh, ISN, I upload the video to it, it sends it out to everybody. And I can tell you, a multi-inspector firm, do the math. You're going to find that this thing's going to be huge. It's going to be by far one of the biggest things. So that's sewer. This is the last and final ancillary. We're going to try and get you out of here within a few minutes after uh, the hour here. But I want you to understand chimney inspections and what it takes. There's a standard called NFPA 211. Go ahead and write it down. And it basically references who's qualified to perform a chimney inspection. Currently, every one of you gives a fireplace inspection at no extra charge. It's free. It's part of your home inspection. Did you know that the only difference between a level one inspection and a level two inspection is running a camera up the flue? That's the only difference. So now all of a sudden you get to charge for a service because you ran a camera up. Yeah, you're going to make an investment. Investment yields a return on investment, right? So this is the standard for chimneys. And by the way, one of the biggest things about this is they talk about this standard is not just done. It's recommended that every real estate transfer, so yes, the home inspection, and it's also recommended annually thereafter. So now you think about standalone services. Guys, I've been talking to franchises all over the United States. And I'm telling you, they're coming up with all kinds of things to figure out how to make in our way through this economy. And that is specifically like, you know, how to make it when there's no work. Well, being able to do standalone surveys is the answer. And all these things that I've talked about today are opportunity for that. I've had clients call me for thermal imaging years after I did the home inspection because they got a leak. Yeah, I put a brochure in my home inspections and now they know I do this. So anyways, a home inspector is one that can be certified and qualified to do level two inspections. And so level two inspections you know, is they talk about any time it's a reline or replacement after a building fire, weather, seismic activity, but also annual inspections. And of course, if you didn't read that section, upon sale or transfer of a property, and that is really what we are. Now, I want you to think about this in November of every year, when every chimney sweep is backed up and they're busy, call them up and ask them when their next available appointment is. We only got like 10 to 14 days to do inspections. So if the chimney guy can't get there for two or three months, doesn't work. That's why the opportunity for home inspectors is huge with doing chimney inspections. So anyways, annual inspections, this is an opportunity for you to make money. And it doesn't mean that you, 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 you know, you can have other vents for doing this. So opportunity for money has nothing to do with the pre-purchase inspections. It can be money annual basis that you can offer. And keep in mind, you're not working on a property, you're still doing inspections. And so you're not in violation of any standards by offering that service. So sit there, home inspectors, including it for free by incorporating an advanced inspection to include video of the internal flu. You are now chutching, making more money on your home inspection, and you're going to have more information. And yes, you're going to get situations where, you know, it's too dirty and you can't say anything. Guess what? It's a reportable condition and that's what their buyers are looking for is to renegotiate. So I want you to think about all these things. And by the way, if I didn't mention it, that sewer camera that I showed you earlier, it is one of the only ones that's convertible into a chimney camera. You change the, the monitor out and hook up a different cable. And now the two most expensive things, the brain, the, the monitor and the camera and you, instead of a hard cable for the sewer, you put a soft cable for the chimney, 
and a couple of rods so you push it up the flue, you're not doing it from the roof. You're doing it from inside the house. And basically, our company has that certification training to complete a level two training. And FPA 211 says that it must be performed by somebody who's properly qualified and trained. And so our chimney scan, you can go to the website and see chimneyscan.com and everything that is a level two certification. So why would you want to do this for your business? Well, it's new services that are less susceptible to economic changes. People still live in their houses. They're still burning fires to heat up their houses. And now we're seeing this change in the economy and people can't get a chimney guy for two to three months in November or December. And now all of a sudden they remember their home inspector can offer this service. Okay. It'll be exciting. It's going to be reinventing your business um, it's basically getting paid and more money and double your fee in 23. You know, these are some of the jobs that I've had over the years, and you can see the revenue that generates and sometimes very simple, easy contracts. Yes, $20,000 contracts doing electrical testing. Great job. I had one job that I had for five years was paying me ten to twelve thousand dollars a year for. I've got right now. I've got several contracts that are paying me in excess of twenty thousand a year. One of them's been paying me for ten, over ten years for that. And so, learning to realize that that you can make more money, reinvent your business, and consider how you can make a change in twenty three and survive any kind of changes that might be thrown at you. Think like a shark. Plan, adjust, adapt like a horse, and you're going to be dominating the business. So right now, hey, we're right on time. At the top of the hour, I have pretty much finished the most of my presentation. There's some things that might help you understand. You may not have the money or want to spend the money. Guys, investment, investment. If you pay 175 bucks a month and you're yielding you know, $2,000 a month, that's a good investment. So think about that. There's some opportunities for financing. And certainly here is my contact information. You can reach out to me directly. You can ask me any questions, email me. I'm willing to stay on this as long as guys are still here. If there's something that you want to know, I don't know if any questions came up uh, AJ on our chat logs, but uh, I certainly am open to answering questions, but uh, now we can open it up, but you got my contact information if anything's needed other than that. Thank you guys so much for participating today. I think that we got a, a couple of questions from Fred. Okay. Uh, I took the level one and it cost about two grand, about 30% of the course was applicable to be a home inspector. Say, so, let me respond to that. So, so that's very much the truth. So level one, each level certification is about two grand. Um, it's 32 hours that it takes to get each one of those certifications. And yes, a large part of it is physics and science, um, you know, and, and those things are not going to make you money. You have to have a good understanding of it. Um, again, level one, if you plan on doing a standalone business is going to be important. You got to do it. It's depending on the right organization that you take level one from, it's an internationally recognized certification. Okay. He's also in Canada and says that he does a lot of indoor pools. So he wants to know what the typical fee for a pool inspection would be. So most guys on pools are anywhere from $100 to $500. Okay. In, in California, majority of all the home inspectors do pool inspections. So I, I've often been asked, how much do you charge? As much as you can get. OK, but uh, in our case, everybody does it. So we try and stay within reason. Um, in my case, I'm one hundred and fifty dollars on a pool and spa, which takes me about 30 minutes. But I'm doubling up. I'm doubling it up and I'm going to go to just shot to probably two ninety five um, for my pool and spa inspection, which will have the advanced uh, uh, testing that I showed you. OK, and yes, that was a Wohler uh, sewer camera. Um, and I think I'm seeing some of them. Vegas has tons of pool and have chemistry experience. Look like I'll be adding. Hey, good for you, Hector. Glad to hear that. And, and you know, I'd, I'd love nothing more than to hear you watch this webinar whenever it may be. If we make a change in your life, if we make a change in your business, I love to hear that. I'm one of those inspectors that will share my knowledge. That's the same reason I took time off my schedule today to be here with you today. And for those who are going to watch us virtually after, I'm with you. I'm with you in spirit. <laughs> so... 
um, yep, no problem. Happy to help you and uh, glad you were able to see the uh, equipment. Is there any last questions? Anything? Did we inspire you, AJ? I think he's on mute. Oh, uh, that was good. Uh, we'll give it a couple minutes to make sure if anyone has any last minute questions. And then we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. Uh, tomorrow at 8 a.m., Coffee with Ben. If um, you guys are interested in joining that, it's 8 a.m. Eastern time. Um, those are usually pretty interesting talks with, with Ben Gramico. It's worth joining if you like. Uh, we also have next week, uh, next Thursday, we have a how to perform a deck expect, uh, deck, expect, deck inspections. Um, oh, looks like we have one from Mike. Any recommendation for chimney cameras besides what you mentioned? Sure. I mean, you can put a GoPro on a stick, buddy. There's a lot of options. In fact, there's a new GoPro, the, the 360. I don't know if you've seen that. That thing is you just got to illuminate the chimney enough. But those things are four or five hundred bucks and you can put it on a stick. I sell a rod kit that's like 350 that can push it up the chimney. Um, you can go get some tent poles that might do the job. I don't know. But um, but uh, yeah, I uh, I would I would tell you there's a lot of opportunities out there. The great thing about the system that I use in the conversion is it's it's pretty reasonable. You know, it's like under two grand or two grand, depending on which one you got, that we have a kit that that changes it. Right now, we have kind of a special with one kit that's like 6,500 with is a chimney camera and sewer camera in one. So those are some opportunities. But yeah, you can literally, there are guys in the chimney industry that are using their iPhone, man. And they put it on a stick and they're spinning it up the chimney. But again, it's all in what you want to make your business. You can show up with that uh, $500 sewer camera. Client may not know the difference. Just make sure the quality of your output is there because that's really what's going to be your reputation is what you're presenting to them. Awesome. Well, uh, I got a correction tomorrow. It is 10 a.m. Eastern time. No, nope, you know, right. I can't. I can't tell the difference between Eastern and Mountain Time. Apparently, it's, it's got an eight a.m. Mount, Mountain Standard Time is what yep. uh, I see now. So. Yep, yep. Double confirm. It is yep. ten a.m. to eleven a.m. Eastern Time. All right. Well, all right, hey, guys. I think, uh, falling off like flies now, and so I uh, appreciate it. Reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks, guys, so much.